Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video of mine. We're back in the studio, and as you could probably tell by the title, we're gonna be looking at another constraint, and I promised that you guys in the last constraint video that I'd be doing the plane constraint or the rigid constraint. And as you can tell by the title, I am doing the plane constraint, and I'm gonna be going over all of the wacky functions that it has, everything about it, and trying to help you guys understand what it's doing. I mean, like, look at this. How can, a, how can a block stand up like that? How can it stand up like that? And that is done by the plane constraint. So we're gonna dig into that and I'm gonna show you guys what it's actually doing, how these are being held together like this and how I can move it around and it's defying gravity, all of that interesting stuff with the plane constraint. That's all gonna be in this video. And honestly, I keep forgetting to say it, but I would super appreciate it if you guys went ahead and liked, subscribed and shared the video with your friends, family and the trees outside, your dog, your cat anything like that. So with that, we're gonna get right into it. So to begin with, I wanted to mention to you guys that there's no actual information provided by Roblox in the developer hub. So all the information in this video will be based on my own discoveries and real life or off Roblox examples where plane constraints are actually used, similar to how Roblox uses them. So I went ahead and did some of the research and testing, and I'm gonna share with you guys what I found. And I will also leave a link to where I got the information from so you guys can, if you want, get a more advanced explanation or an in-depth one. So to start, the plane constraint is specifically a planar mechanism, which is fairly obvious to call it. A planar mechanism though is what it's called when the rigid bodies move based on one plane or parallel planes. When a rigid body or part is constrained by a plane, it is limited to three independent motions. There's two transitional ones, those being its ability to move on the X and the Y axis, and one rotary motion, that being its ability to spin or move around 360 degrees. There are also two pairs that this can fall into, the first being a revolute pair, and the second being a prismatic pair. Revolute means that it will revolve and be able to spin around the point it's constrained to, whereas a prismatic pair slides along the surface of the point it's constrained to. This will be very important later when deciding how to attach and constrain your parts and blocks in studio. I also stumbled across some other places I saw using planar constraints or plane constraints. They were mainly used in other game engines like the Unreal Engine or other physics simulators, which makes sense since Roblox is similar to those and was originally a 2D physics simulator. Based on what I saw coming from those other game engines and physics simulators, the rigid bodies or parts in Roblox act and function the same way or almost the same way. Basically, an object or a character would travel parallel to the plane it's constrained to or planar to its surface. And specifically what I saw was that it was traveling basically flat along the surface that it was constrained to. I also went ahead and ran some of my own small tests in studio and based on what I saw compared to what I read and learned beforehand, I guess I could confirm that in Roblox it is working properly. To help you guys better understand, I also wanted to compare to the linear velocity constraint video. In there, I covered the limited directions you could choose the constraint to travel on, those being vector, plane, and line. The same idea for the plane constraint applies here as well. Similar to what I explained in the beginning of the video, this means that it's going to move limited to two axes, the X and the Y. Another way to look at it is to think in two-dimensional terms. It's flat, and there's only two directions it can move, up, down, and side to side. And similar to in other videos, I would get into the properties, except for this one. This one has no new, important, or function changing properties on it, aside from changing which attachment is attachment one or attachment zero, which every single one has. And that pretty much sums it up for the general explanation of what it does and how it works. And once again, if you want to look into it more, I'll have those links down below in the description. And now I'm going to get into doing some live tests with the constraint for you guys doing tests in multiple scenarios with other constraints being used with the plane constraint where I'll really just be playing around with it. All right, so like I just said, we're gonna start the testing phase. And as you can see, I've got a ton of contraptions here. You've seen me making them throughout the video. And before this, I had a lot of them already set up. But all of these contraptions, a lot of them are attached different. Some of them have extra constraints, like they're able to spin with some torque. Some of them have ropes attached to them, and they are constrained to multiple areas or to each other. Some of them are all unanchored, and these black parts, they're anchored, so they're limiting the parts' movement. And they're attached differently, so they might move differently. And like I said earlier, how you attach it determines what sort of pair it becomes. Those pairs being the rotational and prismatic pair. And so the first ones we're going to look at are these two, because these ones I think are producing and outputting a massive amount of lag. 
because this one's spinning super fast and there's a lot going on within these. And I think there's a lot of calculations going on on Roblox's side while it's moving parts that are trying to move to its specific location. And we can't have that because whenever I load in the game, it takes like 10 years to load in the game. So after we do the test for these, we're going to delete them and see if it changes at all. And hopefully it does. There is a lot going on in this game, you know, beyond these walls. I got a whole nother world. So I'm going to explain what these do real quick and then we're going to go ahead and jump into a test. So what's happening here is that this one's attached to this attachment and it's basically trying to meet the point here constantly. And we can see that it's doing that by hovering over it. I'm using alt select so I can see all the class and the names and what attachments going where and everything. But we can see that by when we hover over it, it's glowing over here, drawing this line to this point and that's how we know it's going to that point. And if I highlight on this one, it's going to this one. So it's trying to go on this face. The whole thing is spinning. So it's putting up massive resistance trying to get to this point on this part. And so it's slowing down this whole piece. And I did the complete opposite over here. I attached this attachment to the opposite face. Same thing for this one. What happens is it actually pushes it up. And because it kind of glitches through, it disables the spinning completely. And you know what's even funnier? As I tried to test it, the whole studio crashed and I had to back up to an autosave. All right, so I went ahead and paused it and now we're gonna resume and here we go. So you can see it's going very slow right now. The torque is set very high. These are gonna get spit out soon. You know, they're curved like that. Yeah, and there it goes. They were curved like that because they're trying to turn to get to that plane. Cause remember it, it was on its side and they're shaking as it's spinning. They're constantly trying to align with that plane, but it won't. Let's take a look at this one. And so these ones, they immediately tried to go to the plane, each one on each side. And as they were trying to get to that area, it started to intersect with this one. And as you can see, they're kind of like forced into each other right now. And it's completely stopping each one. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize, but they actually got close enough to get bit out again. That's kind of funny. Oh, it did it again. Oh my gosh. All right, but yeah, this one is caught on these blocks. So like, let's say I delete them. The torque for this one's gonna start as well. Ooh. Ah, there we go. That's the one I wanted to see, the fling into orbit. For my body ragdolls and then I, I get sent out into the sky. Ooh. Oh my gosh. The blender, we made a blender. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, there we go. All right, so I deleted those spinny things. Loading was considerably faster, I must admit. And I'm gonna activate selection here. Well, first I should activate my constraints. Then I'll activate selection. You know what, we'll go into, okay, I can't do that in test mode. I forgot, I made a video on that. Can't go into physical dragger mode in test mode. But uh, we're gonna move this one around. All right, this one is attachment zero, and this one's attachment one. So let's see. Because this one is attachment zero, I think this one is going to be the one that rotates. In this case, based on this attachment, it's a rotor repair. But based on this one, this is where it gets pretty cool. It's going to move this part along with it. And that is how the prismatic pair works. It's basically locked on this invisible plane. And it's like infinite, infinite distance, infinite height, on the X and the Y. And so it can't move past this point. This attachment cannot move past this plane. It will, will never. And so basically, it'll move the part with it so that it never gets past that point, which is pretty cool. And then we got some floating ones over here. I've attached them differently as well. The blue one is attachment one and the red one is attachment zero and it's the opposite over here. So as you can see, it moves a lot smoother. It moves a lot quicker compared to the other one. And I do have custom physical properties on this. Why it's moving like ice, it might slip off. Oh wait, is it not gonna slip off? Like, look at that, it's just defying gravity. Can I, oh my gosh. I didn't even know it could do that. Dude, that is cool. I've got like a balloon now. Yo, found a new way to make balloons. That is so cool. It's got like some water physics looking stuff to it as well. You rock something in water like this and it'll kind of act buoyant like that. And then this one, it's like hard to move and everything. And once the weight gets off balance, it'll, it'll actually fall off. Yep, and there it goes. But it's staying on a tilt because it's trying, it's trying to align with this one. It's going into the rotary pair mode. Now, if I move it around, yeah, it's doing the rotary thing around this point again. But as you can see with this one, oh my gosh, it went all the way over here. All right, let's push it back. Dude, this is like, I just made anti-gravity. But notice, I can't, if I, even if I jump on it, it won't go up past that point. I can move it side to side. And so basically the plane is looking down on it, like a bird's eye view, like looking at this base plane almost. Okay, we're just going to let it go. Same thing went with these ones. But now we're going to see what happens if there's two of them. Ah. Ah, that's interesting. So each one individually has its own limit. 
and they're both aligning with each individual attachment. Like this one's attached to this point and this one is attached to this one. And this one over here is a little different. I already kind of screwed around with it. But in this case, these ones are the, wait, there's three attachment zeros. I didn't even know I could do that. That's interesting. So, wow, okay, one moves with it and one's limited. Ah, that is weird. This one moves both of them. This one can only move the red one. I think the red one can move both blue cubes. Yeah, it can. And what's even more cool is that one of them is a prismatic pair while the other one's a rotary. Do two different things if you have two different parts attached in two different ways. So this one's pretty cool as well. This one's supposed to be spinning. Well, this one, yeah, no, it's the same as that one actually. One of them's prismatic while this one is rotary. So I can spin this one around the point. It'll, it'll line up flat once it meets that point, but. After that, it turns rotary and it'll just like go around. Same thing with this one, except this one's prismatic, which means I can't push it past this plane and it'll adjust accordingly. That's pretty much the same with the rest of these. So we're just gonna move on ahead to the rope one. They started moving around like this one, as soon as I started testing it, tried to attach itself over there. Then it like broke. I don't know why. And this one, this one just seems to be doing it just fine. Oh, it looks like this plane is trying to move every time this one moves. I don't have enough force. Oh, I can, I can. As soon as I pushed it off, it like, it like goes straight back. That's pretty cool. And the point is still in line with the plane. Like it never, it never crosses over no matter how much I push it. Does this one change based on how this one moves? No, just hanging out. Oh, it does, it does, it rotates. Uh, okay, that's enough of that. that those are pretty simple. You guys, I advise you guys should go run your own tests and stuff with all of the other constraints. And who knows what you might find? You might find a whole new game idea like this one. This one's really cool. It's attached to this face and it, you know, if I push it this way, I can't push it off. Try and get it back on this wall to normal. I can push this along the wall without having to worry about it coming off. If it's being used in a game, just make your wall, wall long enough and it should be okay. Now I can jump up here. And boom, I just made like a, a new type of obby. This one, this one's unique. I didn't think it could go up on a uh, flat surface like this, but then I, I stood corrected because look at this, you can jump. And it's not because of the truss. I also tested that, don't worry. But it, it's just able because of the plane constraint there. Like I, I even made it so the truss is not colliding with this part. So that's how you know it's not the truss. It, it's my body, my body can collide with it. So I can push it up on this wall. All because of the plane constraint, I basically made like an elevator. This one is a rotor repair, which means if I get it off that surface, it'll just pop off, same thing. I think you guys have an understanding by now. I sure do, I've been doing it a million times now. All right, and this one, I don't know what happened to it. Why did it glitch? It's just supposed to be a plane attached to this wall. The uniqueness of this is it's supposed to be like top heavy, you know, it's supposed to fall down, but it doesn't fall down as easy. This was supposed to be a door, right? And you had to push this open and it's a rotary plane, but it doesn't do the fancy top heavy thing as we could see there. It still spins around. This was this one's was a fail. This one was a fail, first fail. Ah, uh, this one's no different from that one. It's just anchored. And this one, same thing. This was the first time I learned of the prismatic pair and that will do it for the testing section that was kind of long and tedious and uh, kind of crazy a lot of unexpected things happen but i hope you guys learned something there all right so yeah that was it i hope you guys enjoyed it or you learned something you take something away maybe you can go make a new game or incorporate this in your game i hope you can if you guys enjoyed and you liked it of course please make sure to like subscribe and share the video Share it all around, like I said at the beginning, with the trees outside, your dog, your cat, especially your family and friends. And also, be sure to join the Discord and things like that down in the description. Check out those links if you want to learn more. And that's about it. And so I'll see you guys in the next one.